Nikki of Bunny Crafts Oxford here with the Amanda Die With Me video. How's everyone doing? I almost want to be like, oh, what's, what has everyone done in the last two weeks? Because that's long it's been since I filmed anything. And I'm not going to lie, I'm very, very glad that the previous time I did filming, I was able to film multiple videos at, in the same day. Because, uh, oh boy. So, I'm going to jump straight in. Oh, if you're new to the channel, hello, how are you? Hit that subscribe button. You know, join join our, our little group of happy dyers and yarn lovers. Um, so, what are we doing today? I have seen some like videos on Instagram and stuff of people doing this thing where they dump a lot of dye on damp yarn, leave it and then throw water on top of it. Um, so that is what I want to do. I have, you all know the drill by now, I've got my four different skeins in here. So I will have a an 80-10-10 MCN, so that's 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon in fingering and in DK. I'll have my 75-25% merino nylon um, mini in fingering. And then I'm just using up the last of this batch of the 100% BFL. So that's Blueface Leicester in Aran White that I have. Um, I like this yarn, but I'm I'm going to be honest. Um, depending on what needles you use, um, it can split. So if I knit using my chargus on using the BFL, because the chargos are so sharp, um, sometimes the yarn will split a little bit. So I think maybe Addies might be a better a uh, better needle to knit on using the this particular BFL. So, um, we're going to be working with the dry powder today. So I have my gloves, I have glasses on, um, but if you don't wear glasses like me, you can use safety goggles. And I have my trusty um, mask, a respirator mask, that's the word I was looking for. Um, we also have a little wet mini on here that I'm going to use to wipe my fingers um, between switching dyes. And then I have my trusty rag to dry my fingers before going into the next um, dye pot. So I'm going to go, be going straight from the dye pots. From yeah, um, Well, for some of it, the little jacquard ones are a little bit difficult to get your fingers in. So I might use a spoon for those. Um, which I forgot to bring around. Give me a second, let me go get the rest of my tools because I am so scattered and scatty. Right, I have spoons and other paraphernalia <laughs> for, for my regular beautiful people that, that watch me do this. This is going to be no surprise to you, is it? <laughs> so let's go over the colors really, really quickly that I'm going to use. So I have a mix between Dharma and Jacquard. I have some Dharma Silver Grey, some Dharma uh, Valentine Blush. So this is like a really nice pink. I have some Sage Leaf, which breaks into beautiful sort of blues and greens. It's quite sort of, has a bit of a greyish tint to it. So I thought it would go nice. Mixed with the pink, I reckon it'll do some nice purples. So there's that. We have some electric violet just to bring some pop to the proceedings. I have grabbed some lilac but I'm not sure I'm going to use that because I have the electric violet already and as I said I'm hoping that the sage and the pink will create some purples as well. I got some teal because I just felt teal might add something to it and then I got some sharp truce because I wanted a a bright color that I think is still going to go well with the pink and I know that this sharp truce goes well with the violet blush um not violet blush valentine blush yep valentine blush so um we're going to get straight in so oh one one other thing so these 
have been pre-soaked in um, a bath with some citric acid. There is no other water in here at the moment. The hob is off. So we're going to layer the colour on and then as I'm layering the colour on, I can proceed to tell you what else I plan to do with this and what I hope to get out of it. But also I'm like, yeah, whatever happens, happens. So apologies if I get a bit muffled. I what I'll do is I will stop the video and start it again because it I can then play with the sound a little bit easier. Right to hell. I have my mask on and I've started the video again because having a separate video file helps me try and regulate the sound and I can up the sound and volume to me speaking with the mask on so you hopefully you can hear me clearly. So I am going to start with the silver grey and this is what our silver grey looks like. It is a really fine powder. I'm going to go straight in. I'm going to pinch just a little bit and just rub my fingers together for the powder to fall onto the yarn. And I want to get quite heavy colour across from all of them but i don't want to go heavy from the get-go i want the overall result to be heavy the other thing that i am debating is so let's make sure we don't forget where the zip ties are get some color in there so the other thing that i'm debating is i'm very curious um how much colour penetration are we going to get using this technique? What level of speckling we might be able to see at the end of it as well. Um, so the idea is once I have layered all of the colours on here, we're going to leave this for 10 minutes. Um, because even though it's cold, there is acid in the yarn. So there should be some striping that happens so some of the color should um, absorb some of the dye should stick to the yarn because we're using the powder dye not all of it will dissolve into the yarn because there's not enough liquid and then we are going to color cover this with cool it's not going to be hot it's not going to be cold it's going to be some cool tap water that well basically with the pre-soak so it already has acid in it okay so i think i'm happy with the amount of this that we have in here i'm just going to use so this is my little screen i'm just going to wipe my fingers on here so It'll be interesting to see how the colours will mix on here. Just give me a good wipe and then really, really dry my fingers before I go into the next pot. And then I think the next pot that I'm going to use is actually going to be that Valentine blush. So this is the Valentine blush. And it's a little bit clumpier. So the different types of dyes are sort of almost different weights. Greys tend to be very, very fine powder. The reds can be a little bit more clumpy, you can see. Um, I don't know why that is. So you get like these little clumps on there. So let's get a bit of this. And just... Not to forget where the ties are. It's really easy to forget to add dye around the edges when you're doing these sort of dry dye um, experiments. So I can tell you by the feel of this, this feels very different to the grey, even though it's the same manufacturer. So this has more of a sticky feel to it. It's not as fine, like my fingers can feel that the powder is not as fine. I'm having to 
control my fingers a little bit more as well as I apply it. So my idea is that I wanted the silver grey to be almost like the dominant colour and then the other colours to just be pops as they mix. So I'm not like, I'm not trying to get some of this pink everywhere. I am like letting it fall in some bigger clumps in some places as well. You'd think, completely like unrelated, you'd think we'd be used by wearing masks, you know, used to wearing masks by now considering, you know, everything over the last nearly two years, year and a half, I guess. Um, but I'm <laughs> finding this mask really difficult to have on right now. Okay. Um... I'm being like really, this is going to be a really pretty colourway with just these two colours. So this might be something I look, look into for sort of spring. <laughs> um, I wonder where the Pantone has come out with its colours already. Anyway, enough. Enough, Nikki. Okay, so I'm going to do some finger wiping. And for anyone curious, this is what Valentine blush looks like. So it can be like a really nice pastel pink with a bit of a sort of, not purpley, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a fuchsia-y kind of feel to it. So dry fingers really well. I think what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to do the sage so the sage has got like these little white bits in it I don't know yeah you can see it like this and that's part of the uh, the, the dye you can see it's again it's a finer dye than um, the blush and it's already it's a lot easier to to spread around I'm really curious to see what we get. I know it just looks really dark at the moment, but there's like these um, bits of like pink. So I think with these colors, I am going quite heavy as you can see. I'm trying to get as much coverage kind of all over and mix them up um but on the other color i think i might do that with is the electric violet i'm just sort of being really random now um but with the electric violet i think i might be a bit more targeted okay so i'm going to wipe my fingers or one of my fingers where the pink is to see because i'm curious to see how that will go so there's a lot of yellow that's coming out from the sage i'm not really i'm not really getting a lot of transfer which is fine i don't mind that and oh let me drop my so what have i used i've used Silver grey, violet blush and sage. I'm going to, so I'm not going to use the lilac. I don't think I need to. Um, my fingers are nice and dry, so we're going to go into the violet, into the electric violet. And you can see this is a very, very deep and pigmented dye. So I'm going to sort of do that in spots I'm not going to do too much of it 
as it is a very pigmented color and I'm worried it will overtake everything else. So that is all the violet we're going to get. And we'll see what I mean about how pigmented it is when I just put my fingers on here and boom, we have violet. Okay. Let's dry fingers. I'm definitely going to use a teal and I'm definitely going to use a chartreuse. And I'm going to go with the chartreuse first. And I'm going to really struggle. And when I'm bringing it up like this, pinch it. And then, oh, this is interesting. This is really gritty. So compared to the other dyes, there's like a real sort of grittiness to this, but it's also like really fine as well. Like you can see how fine it is on my fingers. Oh, that's a lot of dye. So I'm just going to tap this. Um, this is not the easiest one to do this. But it's fine. I, I really don't know what to expect of this colorway. I think we're going to get something that's really quite muddied. Um, but I also think it might be quite sort of cool. What I'm most interested about is what is going to happen on the other side. So I think I started my thought and then didn't finish it. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I know that there's a couple of you screaming at me right now to to stop. I know that because a few of you have recently admitted that you watch these videos. Oh, look at that. I love that. Watch this video is going, no, no, no. <laughs> um, I can't stop. I will always be over the top. And uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, okay, so finally a bit of teal. Um, so I still didn't finish my thought, did I? Right, so once I pour the water on top of this, um, oh, okay, so the teal is also a really clumpy colour. So what I might do is put a little bit of, oh, that's not a little bit of teal. That is a lot of teal. Oh, we've got some teal in that corner now. Okay, so we've got some teal on a spoon so that I can just pinch a little bit and just add it. So, oh, this is really gritty as well. This is really interesting. Um, I want to see what the bottom looks like. I want to see how the colours mix. I want to see what a colour penetration is going to be to the other side. And then I don't know whether I'm going to want to add any more colour. I mean, we are more like most likely going to end up in just brown, to be honest. Or maybe some sort of greeny grey colour. The teal is really interesting. So the teal is super sticky. Can you see? It's almost like a paste. It's really hard to just spread, it's just sticks. So I'm going to try one more time down here. And I think getting this back, oh, apologies. Getting this back into, oh, I haven't that hard. Okay. So. This is going to be a very teal round, but I'm going to wipe the spoon with this. Teal may also be a complete mistake to add in here because it, it leaks, like it bleeds. It really, really, really bleeds. When you wash it, it's really hard to set properly. Um, it can be quite a messy colour. Oh, but it is what it is. I have made my choices and I will live with them and buy them. I am so tangled right now. That is okay. 
So this yarn is the sort of purpley greeny pinky bit. I kind of like that. I have another yarn similar to it. Um, so I think between the minis that I have similar like this, I could get some really cool socks or maybe like a really nice scarf or something. Okay, so I'm going to shut all my jars, uh, take off these gloves just in case I do have some more colour on them, and go and get some water. Go and get the pre soak. Okay, so I have the pre soak on the side here. Oh, just at the hub on. I'm going to use one of these to just grab some water and just pour. Wish me luck. Let's see what happens. I think I have a yarn that looks very similar to this. I'm just going to grab the whole tree so I can just go. And again, apologies. Oh my god, can you see all that dark dye in there? <laughs> but we've got some funky. Okay, I can take this off. Huh? I can take this off. So, I'm really curious. Hold on. Grab this and pop some of this in here. So, this is a sort of. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I keep hitting the camera. So, this is a sort of was blue so what happens if i was to let's find some white there we go we've got some whitish bits on here so we've got a bit of whitey blue on here so we're going to dip this so oh it's like a it's like a gray okay well, I'm going to turn the heat on. I'll do that. I have, so there's a bit here. Hold on, let me just move you around a little bit. There we go. So, you can see we have a bit here which is all bright, like purple and beautiful. And we have some lovely speckles going on. We have some here that is still out of the water, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pop it in. You can see oh over here we have some sort of grains. We have oh we have a very big fly. Go away. Please go away. Nope. Probably here. Hold on, let me deal with this monster. Right, I both cleaned the lens because I realised it was looking a bit mucky. And yeah, so we have some beautiful purples. We have some beautiful greens. We have a bit of that chartreuse. Just sort of in different places. We have a bit of that pink. We have some, we still have quite a bit of white. And the rest of it is is that sort of... Well, let's let's move you over here and show you. So the rest of it is that sort of grey colour, which you know, considering the amount of grey we use, makes perfect sense. Oh, I'm stuck. Help. Okay, I got it. I got it. Oh no, I, I don't got. Oh yeah, I do got it. Oh no, I haven't got it. <laughs> This is going to be so much fun editing. Okay, so I'm not going to prod. I promise I'm not going to prod. I just want to pop this under the water. I can feel the heat is coming on. So I'm just going to make sure this is on the, on the hob nicely. And this is already absorbing quite a lot of colour. 
the water here is nearly clear so there is there is some some dye that is not dissolved like down here so i'm just going to poke this in okay no poking enough poking so we're going to leave this for what time is it now i'm going to leave this for 20 minutes and then i'm going to come back and we're going to flip this to see what's happened on the other side and then what we may do is pour some of this water out do a bit more speckling with a few of the colours, not all of them, depending on what we see on the other side. Or we might leave it as is. We'll see. Hello, you currently have shaky cam because I'm about to go and have a phone call for work. So, um, I'd, ooh. Okay, so this, it looks like all of it has absorbed. So we'll be able to flip this in a minute. Unfortunately, with full-time work and a hobby like this, sometimes the full-time work makes you pause. So I'm going to turn the heat down for this all. Hello. So I've turned the heat down to really, really low. You can see it's like trying to bubble over there where it's all going through let's turn that one even further cool it'll stop making that noise in a minute um so the heat is down really low and i'm going to be back in about 15 minutes when my call is done and we're going to flip this and i'm going to make myself a cup of tea because it's my tea break time right that was an intense couple of <laughs> well an intense 20 minutes so as we already I'm just going to check again. So, yeah, this is there seems there's no color left. So let's flip and see what's on the other side. Ah, I'm so excited. I'm gonna flip these two first. Um, I'm literally just oh, we have had oh bumping this again we have had some really good color penetration i mean mostly what we're seeing is the lilac and the teal and there's a bit so here at the bottom there is a bit of the pink this is the little mini because the mini has got so little yarn on it really when you flip it round it's pretty much the same there's a little bit here at the bottom where we have some amazing speckles I'm really excited about that but I mean really what I'm going to do is just flip things around and then we have the iron weight and that so we've got some nice penetration of the pink here, but again, it's mostly just the teal. So, what to do? What I'm going to do is I'm going to open these up a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to leave them like this. And just sort of have this deep color going into these other not so deep colors. Don't be. This is really hot. I'm so glad I'm using the thick gloves. It's just okay. So. look at the balance of this yarn a little bit so we have here where this is top where we laid a lot of the colors we actually so this is the fingering 
we actually have some beautiful penetration we have a little bit of white here at the top which is to be expected it was where the um tires we do have some lovely speckles but again where the tires we get quite a bit of white so if we move this a little bit we can see this is white but it's, it's part of the future and then again at the bottom we have now and again some lovely speckles of the pink i just dipped it back into the water again we have some lighter sort of pastely greens and pastely blues i think overall Oh, <laughs> I like that. I think overall, I don't know. I am so in two minds. I think what I'm going to do, let's see, this is the DK. Oh, hot, hot. DK has more more white areas again where the the tie was we have some lovely pinks and purples oh okay we also have some beautiful speckles here just beautiful speckles I think what we're going to do oh, I have tangled why am I tangled? it's because I keep moving things around am I still tangled? possibly no. okay so I'm going to put this back in Put this back in. I think I tangled this one a bit as well. This one it's the same as the DK really. So I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to um leave them to cool into in the water. We are going to wash them and dry them and we're going to see what they look like dry. And once they're dry, if we think that the balance is not right. We're going to dip them back in the pan but what i might do is in fact this is what i'm going to do i will dry these i'm going to show them to you dry and then all of you can vote at the bottom of the video when it comes out on whether you want me to add more color to these or leave them as they are and then we'll see what we'll do so there you go the other thing i wanted to show you is just how sort of cool this looks it's all just it's a little bit like my triton's daughter's colorway but instead of the salmon it has the pink in it so i i really like this i think it's really really pretty i'm going to steam this later with some other yarn that i need to steam uh, but until then, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these out of this bath. I need to reuse it to uh, dye a whole load of um, subscriptions, uh, which I'm going to be doing over. <laughs> I'm really cutting it fine. The subscriptions need to be out in two days. They're not going to be out in two days. They're going to be out on Monday. Um, but it will still be within my window. Um, so if anyone has a subscription for October and it's a couple of days late, I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing. I'm going to stop rambling, go get myself a coffee because I think tea is not enough. And get on with some subscription dying. I'll see you later. Bye bye. Hey, hey, so dry yarn. Sorry. I'm in a very funny mood um, this morning and I've just ran up the stairs and I can't breathe but here is our dry yarn and 
I know I said I was going to ask you whether I needed to add more colour. Looking at this, I'm going to say no. I I love that there is light patches, I love the very deep patches, and I'll bring them all up for you to see closer in a second, but I wanted to start with the mini, because the mini has some of the most beautiful speckling through it. Some of the speckles have broken, some of the pet speckles have mixed in such a way that they look like they're broken. I love the Valentine blush speckles, they are beautiful. We have some gorgeous teal colours, we have some gorgeous purples, we have deep blues, we have beautiful light greens, it's, I just, oh my gosh, and look at this, it's just, it's so pretty, there isn't a part of this little skein that I'm not madly in love with, so uh, there is that, I'm just going to do this and put it to the side. So we have the DK, the Aran and the Sock. And so I'm going to start with here. So again, we can see this is the violet, which is why it's so beautifully purple. And then it's mixed further with the Valentine blush. We have these white area. Well, they're not white though. They They are just light mostly bluish and or sort of bluish gray in color we can see so this is where we would have originally layered the yarn and the color even so you can see we still have some speckles going through even like the really really deep colors and then we have some of these beautiful blues which to be quite honest i don't I don't know how these colours have broken. I don't know who... Ooh, look at this. Oh, I've just seen this. Hold the phone. There's our chartreuse. And this is why I added the chartreuse. I knew that there was going to be these little pops of this beautiful green colour where it's broken. So you can see that it's gone to yellow and green. You can see the yellow here and then some of the green that's mixed with something else again over here I absolutely I love chartreuse it does beautiful things it adds a bit a pop of just nice vibrant fresh color so yeah we can see I don't I don't know why there's just a line of very light color here but it's it must have been how the yarn laid so with the DK1, we see, you can see them, we still see beautiful speckles everywhere. There's been some great colour blending. I'm making such a mess of this gain. Hold on. There we go. This is a bit better. We've had some great colour blending. We, it's, it's just, it's gorgeous. And we have these light, light areas, which I think will just add to the, the sort of texture of whatever you're knitting. I wouldn't do cables or lace with a yarn like this. Um, I think you'll just lose the detail of the of the stitch. We then have the Aaron, which is stuck. Is that the... Hmm, I have a feeling this is not the DK. This... Yeah, this is the sock and this is the DK. The sock, when you have cashmere in the skein so this is 80 percent um merino 10 percent cashmere and 10 percent nylon the cashmere seems to plump it up once it's been washed and um, makes it really really nice and round and it makes it look like a dk yarn so I do confuse them often right get to the aran which is quite a different skein it's mostly green there's a lot of green and teals and sort of stuff. There is a the little bit of purple here, but compared to, let's turn this around, compared to this skein, which has a lot more purpley blues, this is a much more sort of greeny teal skein. We still have gorgeous speckles. They are a little bit blown out, which is expected. The electric violet 
looks gorgeous on this yarn. This is 100% Superwash BFL. So very, very different fibre content. Very, very different way of, it, of the dye being absorbed. And then finally, so this is the DK. And DK in my mind is very similar. I'm making such a mess of this. Is very similar to um, the sock. Um, it's It's got this sort of... Oh, wow. This is so beautiful. I, so I think I'm going to have to do an electric violet and Valentine blush skein because I love the way these colours interact. So again, we've got the beautiful teals. We've got gorgeous speckles. They're a little bit sharper, but not quite as sharp as on the sock. So yeah, I think this was really, really interesting. I think this is a really great experiment. If you have a lot of similar colours and you want to know how they're going to blend together or even colours on the opposite end of the, the colour wheel um, and see how they'll blend together as well. Um, the other thing is it's a great experiment to find out how the different fibre contents will absorb um, colour, what they'll do with the colour and it's it's just fun. I, I'm, I'm so in love with these speckles. I absolutely love them. Anyway, I'm not going to do anything else to this yarn. I am going to always keep the mini because the minis are mine. And I think I might actually keep the Aran and make a hat out of it. Um, I'm not sure. These two will definitely go on the shop. And I will actually try and put them up on the shop as the video comes out. Because I didn't do that with the last one. And I'm really, really sorry about that. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up because it really, really helps. Um, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget the notification bell so that you know when new videos come out. And if you really want to... Oh, there goes the camera. If you really want to support the channel further, then in the links below you can... Oh my God, why do I keep knocking over the camera? As I was saying, in the links below, you can find my Buy Me A Coffee page as well as my website where you can buy some of my nice yarn. So thank you again for joining me. I hope I'll see you next time. Have a lovely weekend and rest of the week. Bye bye.